we are officially here on location for the Dumpster Runners Network 2024. got up the plane and picked up the truck here. Todd is detailing it up, it looks awesome. We're gonna take it over to the show in just a little bit here and we'll show you guys what's going on. Alrighty guys, we are here on location at the Dumpster Haulers Network 2024. We got the morning going on. It's a little bit early here before the show is starting. We're just kind of going over. Todd's doing some detail work for us back here. How you feeling this morning, Todd? Amazing. Feeling good? Way better than Michigan weather. Way better than Michigan weather. You heard it here first. Florida, definitely top notch for the weather. Yeah, I think it was 44 when we left uh, yesterday and now it is uh, cool. 78 yeah. right now so we're enjoying it we're gonna go around and show you guys kind of all of the different haulers that we have here we've got Joe Maxi back there he's the one that actually set up this entire event for us awesome job on his part we'll go and do an interview with him later we have a couple of financial companies over here as well Streamline Financial we also got Rolly Skate with us as well I'm sure you guys know about him if you've seen any of our videos if you guys are looking to get some info we're gonna be giving some trade secrets from the top guys in the industry in Florida right now they've just experienced a hurricane so if anybody knows how to haul trash it's gonna be these guys so we're gonna jump right into it make sure that you guys stay tuned today we're gonna to be doing a whole bunch of different stuff it's gonna be an awesome event let's jump right in Okay guys, the full show has kicked off here at Dumpster Runners. Jumping right into things, we're gonna go through and give you some close-up interviews with some of these different companies that are here. We got our truck right over here. We've got the Freightliner M2 106 here today. You guys know about this truck. It's a Cummins B6.7 liter diesel engine under the hood there. Not to mention, we've got the Allison 3000 series transmission in there, so you're gonna have the live PTO as well. Check this out. This is a new system from Rolly Skate here. We just put that on. We got Jeff over there. He's the one that hooked us up with this unit. Basically what that system does, it's gonna allow you to not have to worry about welding any more points on top of your Rolly Skate system there. So it's gonna be really nice. You're not gonna have to worry about it as much. It's a bolt-on, ready-to-go system, so. Are you guys tired of damaging your customer's concrete like this? Make sure you check us out and give us a call at qualitytruckandequipment.com. We can set you up with all your rolling skate products and needs for all dumpster sizes. Here, of course, we got our custom bumper set up in the back here with the SL214 on top for the hoist. Awesome setup, as you guys know. We've got all the D-rings, the mounts, everything else is good to go on this truck. So we're gonna do a couple interviews with different guys in the industry here today and kind of see what they're dealing with, what these guys are looking for when it comes to a truck. Stay with us, guys. We're gonna jump right into it. Thanks for watching Dumpster Runners Network. We've got all sorts of cool stuff going on. Behind me here, we've got Joe, he's giving out a speech presentation on his truck there. We'll include a couple parts of that as well. Just kind of the different specs that he uses on his truck to make sure that he's making the best out of his truck and trailer setup at the end of the day. We've got our truck sitting over here. It's gonna be doing a couple of different talks over in the pavilion over there as well to just try to find out what is really driving this dumpster industry right now here at Florida. So it's an, it's an eight-way feature set. So I can, one of the cooler things that I couldn't do previously, I can now sit in the truck and actually operate my tarp as I'm coming in and out of the landfill, picking up a dumpster, really cool feature. The only thing that I have to get out of the truck for is to start the motor 
And if I even wanted to get crazy, I could throw an auto start on there and not even have to do that, which is just taking the, what is an inconvenient process that hook lift benefits over the roll off. Now I can cut a couple of those steps out where things can be operated from inside the cab if I so choose so. One of the biggest things for me that drove me crazy on my last trailer is the toolbox felt like four walls of metal with a sheet of diamond plate on top. It does not stop water from getting in by any stretch. It does not stop dirt from getting in. So everything was just this chaotic mess with a battery sitting inside of it. Here they've gone through, they've put the softening dampeners on there so the lids close nice and smooth. It's an actual toolbox now, rather than just a square thing with a lid on it. So on this side, all the operations of the trailer, I had them throw strobes in on the side, which is another nice feature set. On the other side, they actually installed an air compressor into the toolbox. So if you got a flat tire, you're on the side of the road, now you can actually air up, which is nice. It could also be used for blowing the trailer off if it gets dirty or gets wet, things along those lines. Just really nice creature comforts to kind of take this to the next level. The board holders are one of my simple but awesome and effective pleasures. In the past, everything's stored in my truck bed, which if you've towed a goose neck, it's the biggest pain in the butt. As the you know shocker hitch is moving around, you're shuffling boards, your chains are getting all wild. Now I can move those boards here to the sides and not have to worry about it. I can also set rolly skates in here. It's wide enough to fit them. I am looking to mount them on the side, but I'm working on finding the right spot to put it. One of the biggest hangups for mounting the rolly skates was I wanted to have a visual fire extinguisher. So the only spot that I've come up with that's good for it is where the fire extinguisher is. But if you see here, right inside the neck, we have a fire extinguisher ready to go. So you have to have one in the truck as per DOT compliance but now I have a secondary one that's right here on the side. If stuff needs to get pulled off, the truck next to me is on fire, dumpster's on fire. Anyone that's at the landfill next to me can go ahead and grab the fire extinguisher, pull the pin, make it happen. So I did have them go above and beyond. They started getting into the unique paint setup. So they powder coated all the rollers, powder coated my wheels, oh, the powder coat on the tarp gantry shield as well. I had them do a lot of two-tone stuff because I thought that was just a cool visual flair that kind of changes it up from the rest of the market. A lot of black, a lot of green instead of just, you know, the default stuff. Okay, guys, we got some awesome events going on over in the pavilion here. We're going to go in, jump into the pavilion, see if we can't get some of those insider details. We're a little bit late on the start, so let's get right into it, y'all. you get to the point where you got eight orders that day and you can only do five of them and you can do that consistently over and over those three orders really add up really fast and the extra expense and the things that come with having the hook lift it's a no-brainer it's time to jump to that next level get yourself that nicer truck when you're just starting out you're gonna have more time in a day twiddling your fingers than you know what to do with if you're three or four cans because they're gonna be sitting on jobs for a few days at a time. It's easy to get through five, six orders in a day if you know what you're doing and your landfill's not two hours away. So even going through the hurricane where I was slammed, you know, crazy from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., I was still relatively able to keep up with my trailer, but it would have been really nice to have the hook lift in that equation. It's a little bit of growing into your shoes and just figuring out what works best for you in that equation. Here's a couple things to keep in mind too. If you start on a trailer and you buy the right trailer and you go to hook lift truck, your trailer's your backup truck. If your truck goes down. But you go right to a hook lift truck. And you need you to have two. <laughs> uh, yeah, now it's an expensive game. The other thing too, like I talk to a lot of people that call me to have a hook lift truck and they're running 10 dumpsters and they're doing seven day rentals. You can't afford to insure that truck. So the other thing too is it really kind of depends on like are you jumping into the game with 30 cans and you're jumping into the game with three or four? Because if you're not jumping into the game with 20 plus cans, that whole truck is a very expensive piece of equipment to sit while you're doing seven day, 14 day, 20 day venting. So there's a lot that goes into it. That's still why I like, I personally like guys starting on trailers, buy the right trailer, because when you do go to hook lift truck, that now becomes your backup. You can still run your cans with, and you're not forced to go out and buy a second truck. It's an expensive game, guys. Sure. It, it, it'll sneak up on you pretty quick. The one thing I learned about today was this reading system that makes the screen So, are you familiar with archery at all? 
So uh, a reaving system is a lot like a compound though, right? So traditional archery, you pull a string, let go, arrow flies. When you get into a compound bow, the pulley mechanisms that go with it add a tremendous amount of power with less force. It's like five snatch blocks. Essentially, every time you loop one of those flywheels, you're doubling the pulling power of the system. The other benefit, and this is why I'm a huge fan of reaving for a long-term game plan, if you go with a traditional winch system, you are going to replace that winch every one year, two years, three years, if you're lucky. And it's like, it's not a question, it's when is that winch gonna stop working for you? When you use a reaving system, you eliminate the winch. It's just a fixed cable. So the cable mounts at a position up top and then the hydraulic rams push a plate through the flywheels and, and acts as your pulling system. So if you look at the cost of like a winch system up front, it's gonna be less by five, six, seven grand. If you look at 10 years into it, you've replaced the winch three or four times for $2,000 a piece. You've already spent the money that you would have on the reaving, but you had less power, more trouble, more downtime. Your cable's fraying more often because now it's wrapping up versus staying straight the entire time. And then on those heavier loads where you're not really sure, it's like, is this gonna give me a hard time? That reaving system will rip your house down before it even starts to consider that it's, it's overworking itself. So there is a little bit of extra to it because now you're incorporating more hydraulics. But if you talk to most hydraulic guys, hydraulics tend to not be a problem as long as you put them through maintenance every handful of years and you're not overly abusing your system, the chances of those hydraulics needing to be replaced is low. It's mostly just like replace seals every once in a while. If a line blows, maybe you have to refill the, the uh, fluid on it, that kind of thing. But you're already in a system where you're dealing with hydraulics. So those are problems that you're running into anyway. Now you're just adding two more hydraulics into the equation. So yeah, I'm a, I think reaving, regardless of whether it's trailer or truck, is a really great way to go. If you do go winch systems, there's your traditional electric winch that you'll find in like off-road vehicles, stuff like that. There is also hydraulic winch systems, which are a lot more powerful, but still run into a lot of the same problems where the cable is winding up in a school, so the fraying and stuff like that happens more often. But reaving tends to be a very low maintenance system with quite a bit more pulling power to go with it. So. Guys, just one thing to really keep in mind. How many of you guys charge extra for days? When you get to a certain point, you charge extra for days. That's your best friend to control your inventories. Okay, we used to be fifty dollars a day because I wanted the cans back, and the customer's not going to let that can sit for fifty. And I wake up and I got sixty-two pickup requests. I can no longer do fifty a day, so I lowered that price to get people to keep the dumpsters longer. So I can get to them. Guys will message me, he like, see, it doesn't work. He went from 50 to 19. No, you don't understand. Now, 100 cans out there at 19 a day. That's one thing I like about the additional day. It's like, you, that's another level of pull that I can move that price time of year, anything like that, and I can manipulate. If you rent a can for seven days, you can only turn it once every seven days, right? So if you've got 14 cans, you have a two day supply. You guys got to know your supply, and that's how you manipulate your supply. Supply, how many cans do you own? That's your supply. So you take how many days you rent that for, your most popular rent, and you time that out by how many days. So if he's got 12 cans, let's just say he's got 14 to keep the math simple, and he rents for seven days, that's a two-day supply. That's all he has. That's not bad. Yeah. Two days you're out of cans because you set you set seven cans and give them seven days. You don't, you can't get that can back for seven days unless they call you. Where if he was doing one day rentals, he has a twelve day supply of cans. The way his pricing model set up, he has a two day. If you want to compete against the big guys and you want to act like you're running a hundred cans and you want to do it with twenty cans, choke them back on how long you give it to them and start charging them more longer. This is how I sell against all you guys that offer seven days. I'm like, hey, I'm the only dumpster rental company that's gonna let you customize your rental. I'm the only one. All these guys are gonna force you to take it for seven days, you're taking it for 14 days, you fill it in a day, and now this thing sits here for 13 days, and you pay for 14. With me, keep it. 
keep it as short as you want, as long as you want. Every day at this time, it renews for $19. Keep it till Christmas, and then you crack a joke. And if this thing's still sitting here at Christmas and you can't figure out why, you haven't called them. But they like that because they're in control, and then when you do back and billing, you never get a like, hey, hold on a sec, let's talk about this. Why, why is this? Because you explain it, and that starts with your guys when they do the job. But that's another lever that you guys can pull, and you need to look at your inventory supply and how much do you want. And the shorter you rent them, the more you extend your supply out, the more you can act like a larger company with fewer cans. Look, if you're out there competing with a guy that had to spend money on 100 cans and you only bought 20, you're more comfortable. But you got to turn the cans. Got to keep them turning. So an another way that I look at that is what is the size of your operation and how many cans can you actually get through in a day? So like during all the storm work that we've had this past month, I borrowed a few cans from a couple people, so my inventory fluctuated between 10 and 14 roll-offs at any given moment, but I'm a one-man show. So if I can only touch five or six cans in a day, then doing a one-day rental is fine, but I'm not gonna get to every single can every single day. So I made it a two-day, every single can that I dropped, and every other day I was dropping on a Monday, picking that up on Wednesday, doing the other half on Tuesday, and I'm touching every can as fast as I humanly possibly could get through it. And if someone, you know, wanted it a little bit longer, maybe I'd prioritize another pickup, let that sit there a little bit longer just to get through it. But if you can't physically get through the number of cans that you have by yourself, it's either time to tool up, or you could also extend the amount of time that you offer just to take a little bit of load off your back at the same time. We have to do it seven days because of time. Southern California, I'm sure like other parts of the country, traffic is horrible. So John can do 40 can by himself with one driver. These guys can move. Also, his transfer stations, they can get in and out in about 10 minutes. My drivers are sitting for an hour, hour and a half at a rental. That's on a good day, sometimes two hours. So the number of cans you can touch in a day is very limited. So I do it for seven days. It gives me the flexibility of leaving my dumps from there, not having to worry about it. And if we have four trucks, uh, just shy of 100 dumpsters, and that's what we can do with four trucks. And not only that, you got a can to get all different parts of location. Our, our goal right now is when we drop a can, I want to have a can to pick within a mile. That's, that's our goal. That's what we're trying to do. So every can we deliver, Within a mile, I want to be able to pick a can ready to go. That's what we're kind of scaled to. Drop, pick up. Because if I'm doing that, and my truck's loaded 93, 94% of the time, I am far more efficient. It doesn't make any sense to run 45 minutes out of town to grab a can and bring it back. That's a touch. You know, you want to keep those touches as low as possible. And so you wait until you get a delivery up in that area, and then you run a can out, pick it up 45 minutes. There's a lot of reasons why guys do it. So guys, one big thing that you're gonna notice about a lot of the trailer pull guys out here is that they have thought ahead of the game. Check this out. Not everybody that's doing cable pull has to stay strictly cable pull, guys. You can get your cans built with a hook on them as well. So my camera's kind of freaking out there right now, but I'm gonna see if I can't focus on it. But you can see that they do have an extra hook on there too. So this company is ready to go when they want to get into that next size. They wanna to go to a hook lift, right? Let's say they wanna to go to a brand new hook lift truck they have that availability because they have that hook on there. They're ready to go when that time comes. So these guys have done a pretty good job building their business so that they are able to grow with the company so that they don't outgrow their cans. So we got John Cook, the man here. We're gonna get our one tidbit with him. He's, he's tough to catch, but John, <laughs> if you had one thing that you would say to a guy that's going from a trailer setup into a hook lift setup, what would that be? What would you tell him? Ooh. If you did the one where you're trailer to hook lift. Best advice I'd probably give someone is do your homework, plan your moves two moves ahead. So when you're in a trailer, get a standard rail, set your cans up so that when you do make the transition to the hook truck, you don't have to retool your whole fleet. That's a pro tip right there, for sure, absolutely. 100%. The builder manufacturers, you know, MatCore, Evolution, these guys, they're, they're helping the guys make better decisions. Starting to catch on. Hey, you know, let's not just think about today, let's think about 
Two the years from now, three years from now. That way you don't have to retool. Retooling is expensive. It, it is. Super expensive. Trying to trying to get a conversion kit on there is just a nightmare. That's, I've been through that with guys. You're killing it on the channel, though. Mike. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Thank you. All right, all right. All right, guys, so the event is closing down here. People are kind of packing their stuff up. We got some awesome stickers here. We're giving out some really cool merch at the end as well. Shout out to Joe for putting this event together. Awesome to see all the guys come out and really just showcase what they got out on the floor here. Once again, make sure you check them out at maxcodumpsters.com out of Florida here. So make sure you guys stay tuned. We're going to be coming to Waste Expo in Las Vegas. So make sure you guys come back and check that out with us as well. We appreciate it, guys. Have a great day.